Well, hello everybody. Cleveland Pound Performance coming to you. And as you can tell, we have something very special and very long in here. So, what is this behemoth of a girl? Great question. Let me take you through some of the history and tell you. This is a 1968 Tornado AQC 707 Jetway. What is an AQC 707 Jetway? In the mid-1960s, Mr. Cotner and Mr. Bevington were basically a big part of the Divco Wayne Corporation. And they left Divco Wayne. They had a big influence in GM as well with the Cadillac division. And they went and started their own company down in Arkansas. They believed so heavily in what they were building and starting that they sold all their stock and opened their own company. American Quality Coach. The guys down in Arkansas, once they opened their company, wanted to make basically, you know, a couple of things on their platform. Ambulances, hearses, and what back in the day was called an airport courier wagon. This would ferry people to and from the airport because it was like modern day where you had like a big old, you know, shuttle bus or stuff like that. This was basically the very first crack at that. But what's cool about these things is these guys didn't just want, you know, like the modern day limo where you just, you know, chop it, extend it. These were hand-built coach items. So they opened this whole company. They have this whole great vision. They spent all their money in tooling. They're going to get this coming off the ground. And it's hard to start a company. It's hard to build it up. It's hard to do all that. So unfortunately, only 52 of these guys got built. They never got to hearses. They never got to ambulances. And after 52 of these things were built, the company went out of business. So the company was alive from 1968 to 1970. 52 of these beautiful girls were finished. And no matter if they were finished in 1968, 1969, or 1970, they were still titled as a 1968 Tornado. With that being said, we're going to come up and we're going to kind of do a front-to-back A history of our car and also teach you about, you know, this great thing. And this truly is a piece of Americana here. So let's kind of just go over some features of what makes this girl so special and so rare and educate everyone out there who might not be so familiar with your AQC 707 Jetway. So from this point forward in the video, Everything I say is fact. And if it's on the internet, you know it's a fact. But if I'm wrong, hit me up and educate me. I've done a lot of research on these girls. Um, Brad, thank you very much for all of your help. He's very much into these girls, knows a lot more research than I do, and he knows where a lot of the ones existing still are. So we got two in Southern Ohio, three in Wisconsin. That puts us at five here. Stay with me on the math. One out in California, six. One up in Canada, seven. One over the United Kingdom Museum, eight. So you are staring at the ninth wonder of the world in the AQC Jetway 707 right here. Pretty cool, and there's something that small of a number left. So there's nine left. There's rumors of the Nebraska one, the Maine one, the Minnesota one. Maybe they exist, maybe they don't. Do they get crushed? No one knows. Um, I'm sure somewhere out there someone else has one in their garage. Hit us up. Let's all become a wonderful team on these girls, and let's give the glory back to the AQC 707 Jetway. So as we look at the front of this girl, she's a Tornado. Big, beautiful flares, you know, great 60s styling. We got our flip-up headlights, obviously not functional, but cool features of the 60s. So as we pop this hood, and this is one of the very cool features of this girl, and this hood barely opens still, but right here we have our original build plate from the American Quality Coach Company down in Arkansas. And it's going to be a little bit tough to tell here, but we got number 12. It's numbered as 112 because these started the 100 marks, so this is number 12. A lot of times the VIN producing, vehicle producing on a limited number of stuff, people will inflate the number. So number 12, I didn't number them. Um, it is a front wheel drive system, just like the Tornado would have been back in the day. So with the front wheel drive Tornado, pretty cool because you would think something this big and long would have a 35 foot drive shaft in it or whatever, but she's always built for class. And we'll go over a second when we get inside why she is front wheel drive. But so the hood is basically a stock Tornado. Pretty impressive, big block, V8, 455, big girl. So that is what powered your Jetway back in the day. Absolutely love this. Really cool to still have something like that that survived that long through the year because really what that means is, A, she has been wrecked in the front, which even she was not the biggest deal. B, that is stuck through the history of time and tags like that are what kind of help show the history. What helps us research through and figure out this is number 12. So as we start coming through, we're going to kind of walk our way front to back and keep teaching you and we'll keep learning together about the AQC 707 Jetway. So how did this become our 707 Jetway? Our painter Jim sent this to me off uh, Facebook because actually where it started. And, you know, kind of a joke I think when he sent to me, but when I saw her first sight, she was, she was something. She was beautiful to me. Big, goofy, beautiful. 
Well, then once I started researching, I actually realized this wasn't some just jalopy thrown together. You know, it's an actual true piece of Americana. Yeah, I, I fell in love. It was a lot, way cooler once you knew this wasn't just some hacked together thing. So ours went down to Arkansas, finished June 20th, 1968. Love that fender tag. Shipped back up the Great Motor City, Detroit. In Detroit, from the GM executives to Detroit Metro Airport, back and forth, this was her first role in life. You know, you got 10 people in there, important business meeting, boom, we gotta get down to Metro. Boom, on the plane, flying. And then after her service where she worked from, you know, these dates are a little gray, but you know, pretty good. Worked up until, you know, the late 70s-ish with GM. Then became Detroit Metro's, you know, kind of just, it seemed like Detroit Metro, GM, whoever it was, just a handshake deal, stayed within the airport. Worked up until the mid 80s, went to a limousine company. So owner two is now a limo company. So from the 80s up until roughly, you know, 1999, party girl. And that's also when our centipede name came on this. I have no idea what owner two meant with that, what centipede is, what that stands for, why it's on there. No idea on the centipede. So owner three, who was roughly 1999 until we picked her up, was also up in Detroit. Love the Detroit history, the fact that she's been up in Detroit. So owner number three, family, worked with the limo company, bought it from the limo company. There is a picture kicking around the Woodward Dream Cruise that's dated 2009 on the internet. The owners and the family have told me that that picture is incorrect and the date is actually roughly 2004 was when that picture was taken. Take it for what it is. Woodward Dream Cruise, that one famous picture of her, you know, out there and you look on Google Images. That's obviously her and her. that was the last of her former glory. So as we start to walk around this girl a little bit and you see some of these windows being blown out on both sides. Owner number three, family history told me was, stepson was shooting out the windows of the BB gun. The owner got in the car, was incredibly mad, went to a wicked burnout to, I guess, go find out where the kid who shot the windows out was. And during that wicked burnout, accidentally went off the road a little bit, went into the grass either blew the transmission, knocked the linkage off, whatever. So at that point, the transmission was no longer functional. That's it. That's why she's the last she moved. So roughly 2004, 2005, the BB gun incident turned into the burnout incident, which turned into sitting. So unfortunately, the owner who was in the burnout incident has passed. Um, the family, you know, took the estate over for the guy. And she's just been kind of sitting out there up in Michigan, you know, and unfortunately when you're this big, you don't really fit in a warehouse or garage. So mother nature always wins. We all know the story. Mother nature's undefeated. Mother nature's definitely undefeated against metal. So mother nature took her toll on her. So from give or take 2005 until lately, and the family really wanted to keep it. I totally understand. It's the history. It's the legacy. When you're up there like this, you're not, you know, how do I want to say it? You're, you, you feel for that man. Like there's cars I still want to. This isn't per se the car itself. This is the family memories. The whole family, because you can fit, you know, your family, your cousins, your second cousins, your fifth cousins in this thing. The family going around Detroit, the family doing all this stuff. It's all the memories. The mom was there, you know, you hate to see she's got tears in her eyes. And it's sad to see it go, but also they realize, which is great, is, is this going to become scrap and never see the road again? Or does this have an opportunity to go see the road again? So in the end, once she gets on to the next path, our path, a little bit of relief, a lot of sadness, but you know, we go over this stuff. We realize the Americana here, we realize the history. So that's why we got her out there, and that's how we became owner number four. Proud owner number four of his AQC 707 Jetway. What else to me, Drew, you know, besides her beautiful looks? Well, so as you research through these things, and as costs tried to start getting maybe, you know, controlled a little bit in the build and try to save what they had going on, the steel roofs became fiberglass roofs as the builds went on. From what we can tell, and I think we're right, we have the last steel roof jetway produced. Pretty cool. So these roofs came either in a three window, one, two, three, or a five window option. And as you can tell, we clearly have a three window option. Between the three window and the five window, not a big deal. Fiberglass steel, not a big deal. I'm a goofball, I like the history. So if we got the last steel one produced, pretty cool. As you can tell, we have 414 doors on her, or four per side. Pretty crazy. What's cool is a lot of people think these are like an old GM station wagon door. They weren't. They were actually hand-built doors from the guys at Cotner Bevington who decided to make American Quality Coach. So, like I said a couple times, limousines are usually just hacked, stretched. This had a custom roof built onto it, 
So when you're going to the airport, you're looking out the sunroof, you're looking out the side windows, it gives you more headroom. This truly was built for luxury. The trim looks like we just used some house trim or trailer trim, but hey, it's the 60s. Well, in terms of doors, yeah, they make some noise, but they all open and our glass, of course, is shattered. But the fact that this thing hasn't moved in 20 years and this thing's still well built enough for doors to shut is pretty flipping awesome to me. And there's been other ones out there. Stageway in the 70s when this company went under, Stageway picked them up. Stageway now is Armbruster Stageway. Been building limos for 100 plus years. That's a big time company. When a company like this, a smaller company like our company, you know, you throw your hand there and you go against the big guys. Unfortunately, they didn't make it out. And just like us, it's a struggle, man. Small business is a struggle. But I respect the hell out of a place that went in, in Arkansas, in Stageway back in the day's backyard. And Stageway, when these went out, Stageway made them in the 70s. Roadkill had one, I'm sure you guys all saw where Stageway took a Chrysler and basically just hacked it, didn't do it, but did not have the roof, did not have the custom doors. Yes, the trim might have left something desired, but I love the art of the build. The fact that we're gonna hand build four doors. The fact that we're gonna raise the roof because it just gives the passengers a much more luxurious experience. Now granted, Stageway and Iron Bruce are still in business, so maybe they're honest on them, but I always, <laughs> it's a small business, it's hard. So you go throw your hand in the ring, I love the fact that they went for it. I love the fact that they were doing it with no stops. Build this thing beautiful, build it for what it was. Passengers need more headroom when you pull on the runway. Look out these sunroofs. Build the roof, so I love it. So as we start to come inside our grill now, let's come in here, and there's another great feature on this. Think about back in the day, what would have been cheaper, and I know the Stageway one that I was showing the Roadkill episode, a bunch of bench seats. Individual seats, flat floor. Well, why a front-wheel drive car? A front-wheel drive Tornado gives you a flat floor. That way, each executive has comfortable spot for their feet. So as we come in here, I am now one classy 1968 Jetway driver. Um, basically, a 68 Tornado in here, which through the years, we have added gauges galore in here, um, gadgets and whatnot. But for the most part, front wheel drive, I'm driving. What all this stuff do? I don't know, man. <laughs> These cars are this old. People added a bunch of stuff. So the driver's in here, you probably got, you know, maybe another worker with you or perhaps maybe someone else from the, uh, you know, the higher up that gets the front seat. But as we start to look through the back of this thing, this is where the airport ferry, the airport courier, whatever you want to say, starts to do. So I'm going to hop back one row and kind of go over some stuff. So as I'm in here, some just, you know, if this was, say, a scratch and sniff type thing, I would give you an honest assessment. The mold, of course, is an old car. Um, it smells like butt in here. Um, trying to think of even how to accurately describe the smell in here. So, like, way back in the day, you know, a long time ago, I lived out in Arizona for a while. And, obviously, it's hot out there. And I was working at a bar. I went to pick up my friends. I wasn't drinking that night. I came in, and someone threw up in one of those big industrial, uh, you know, those AC units. And it was 100 degrees out, whatever, 3 a.m. And, it, and the smell, is it's kind of what it is in here. So, it's pretty awful in here. But now that we got the scratch and sniff part over... Let's just pretend like we're all basking our glory back in here. So it's the 60s. You know, I'm my big time executive, individual seats, and also my butt is soaked right now because this thing is absolutely wet in here. We're going to our big business meeting. We all got our individual seats, which once again, comfort. I got my flat feet. There's no tunnel. There's no drive shaft. I got my ashtray. So maybe I got my secretary over here. She might be, you know, five months pregnant. She's got her Virginia Slim going. I got my marketing director over here. He's got his big old cigar going. It's the 60s. We can do this type of stuff. We weren't worried about our kids. You know, I might crack open my ashtray, which won't even open. I got my highball or whatever, but we are class. No one's wearing pajama pants to the airport. We are in business suits. We are the American working class. We are going to the airport. We are looking through sunroofs. We are looking through all these extra windows. We are going right on the runway, and we are taking in what the air experience is. And that's why the jetway is so awesome, because it's a piece of Americana with all of our business class, with our secretary, with our marketing director. I'm still drinking. The driver's probably still drinking. We're all smoking. No one cares. We are classy business people heading there in our classy car. So I'm going to bounce back another row. I got to be honest, this row, way better. I'm seeing the planes. I might open my sunroof. These sunroofs, original back today, look like the glass probably been placed in the 80s. But um, I'm seeing the planes all the way through. I feel like this is original glass. These are not. 
Um, but I am looking out of the airplane. I'm doing this. I actually got a little more room, but once again, individual seating. Connor Bevington, American Quality Coach, they really built this thing right, you know. And that's what's cool is, is this just wasn't thrown together. This was built to be the highest class. And I'm only in count the front row. I'm only in row three. We going back? Let's go back another row. Well, hey there. I'm now in row four, but you can tell the mold is absolutely just everywhere. Um, my butt is absolutely soaked. And once I get through that stuff, I am still classy. So even though I have this full thing going on, I have a great view, great view, great view. We're still going. Well, behind me, I still have more seating. But wait, there's more. And hey, you guys need to get the back. Maybe the kids, maybe the new person, one of the interns. I'm going to flip my seat down. And they're in the back, and we got a bench seat back there. But even though they're in the last row, and growing up, the last row of the bus might have been the coolest part of the bus, but it wasn't the most comfortable. With the American Quality Coach, Jetway, you're still comfortable, and you still have your own sunroof and your own windows. And we're only in a three-window side, not a five-window side. Well, what would you need the five windows for? What else could there possibly be going on in a car this long? Well, there's more. Let's head to the back. <laughs> what do we got here? We have, and it's another great thing about the American Quality Coach Builders. Once again, all these other ones are single axle, single rear axle. We took the time back in the day of building this to truly care enough about our luggage and our weight we were running. Instead of, like I said, the Chrysler ones and stuff that were built, it was just a normal trunk. We wanted to make sure if we had 15 passengers in here, that is correct, you can fit 15 people in here on one trip. We also had room for their luggage. So why not make this longer? Pretty cool. So in terms of a modern six by six, no, it's not really that. It's a front wheel drive with two solid beams, but come on people, we're talking about the 60s here. I flip and love it. The look's incredible. You barely see this on modern cars. It's 1967 we were doing this to build as a 68. So as we come around back, in case you didn't know, this is a custom vehicle. And obviously that's a bit of a tornado thing, but I think that's actually just kind of comical a little bit that I think it's pretty cool we got custom. Come back here. Obviously looks like an old Herster and Amos from the 60s. Basically a Toronado lower back. These were, from what I can tell, these were all original back in the day. You can get these with roof racks. You can get them with five windows. And you can pick your own interior, as in if you want gray, tan, blue. So they're also customizable. So we come back here. Well, hello, all of your executives. Where are you guys flying today? Oh, Miami, big mean down there. Hope you kill it. Well, let me get your luggage for you. And what we have back here is more mold, of course. And some random car parts and a smell that comes out of this thing just makes you want to actually throw up. But once you get past all of that, this is a trunk. So you might say, well, that trunk's pretty small for 15 people. Back in the day, like we could actually pack like a normal bag and go to the airport. You see the like person in the airport, like 60 bags. You don't need to travel like that, people. Put your stuff in your bag, go to the airport. So these are, you know, smaller day trips and stuff. You weren't going out of country for a month. You stack all your luggage back here and you have 15 people's worth of luggage while sitting comfortably, while staring out of there, while pulling right onto the runway. I mean, how cool is this? And with the weight, the double axles back there, you got yourself comfort, you got yourself functionality, and you got a really well-built machine. Um, looks, yeah, it's a little different, but I mean, what else carries 15 people and carries luggage? Canyon Arrow, after that, I don't know. All of my luggage is loaded, and I'm gonna try to close just a pinch of smell. That glass is broke too. So. What's next for the 707 Jetway? Well, let me tell you the issues, and we want you guys in our comments to let us know what you think we should do with her. So, we know we have a transmission issue. Is it shifting? Is it the transmission? Is it the linkage? Did a raccoon die in there? I don't know. Gonna have to find out. Um, Floor-wise and metal-wise, it's rotted everywhere. I mean, half the floors are just basically like, you know, the old Flintstone style, just see right to the floors. We got floor pan issues. We clearly have some custom glass from one-off doors that are no longer uh, glass. We have a smell and a mold issue. And you might not notice when a car sits outside for 20 years, I guess there's going to be something else wrong with it. So I'd be lying if I said I didn't have a vision for it. But I also want to hear your guys' vision. So guys, gals, hit us up with your vision. Hit us with a great thing. Put up in comments. My man Tim's going to pick, you know, maybe the two best comments. We'll send you guys a big swag bag of T-shirts, hat, whatever. So give us your feedback on what we like. We'll hit you up with some stuff. And then after you guys get all your comments, we'll take it in. And we're going to post what we're going to do with her next. Once again, thank you for coming along our journey 
of your 1968 American Quality Coach 707 Jetway experience. Thank you.